going to talk about a town called Jericho, the same community, the same streets, and quite possibly some of the same people in the crowds. Yet there's two different stories we're going to look at about two different people. As we explore these two stories, I'd like you to listen and try to spot the differences. So here we go. We've got spot the differences again here. Maybe you've seen a beggar before sitting on the pavement. Many sit there all day in the hope that someone will come and throw a few coins. But this beggar, it wasn't just a beggar. He was a blind beggar. He couldn't see. And this was an added problem. He was blind as well as poor. He couldn't see to work. He couldn't see to walk. He couldn't see the clouds in the sky or the faces of the people around him. Life was very hard. If his begging bowl was empty at the end of the day, perhaps he wouldn't have anything to eat. He was to be pitied. The blind beggar had to depend on other people. He had to depend on his senses to find out what was going on. But suddenly, he became aware of a crowd round about him. He sensed their excitement. He asked them what was happening, and they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. The crowd was excited. News of Jesus had spread far and wide. In another village, Jesus had recently healed 10 men with a dreaded skin disease. Maybe, just maybe, if Jesus had healed them, maybe you could do that to him too. The blind beggar shouted to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd shouted, be quiet, man. But the blind beggar was desperate. He shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped where he was. He ordered his friends to bring the blind man to him. He looked at him and asked, what do you want me to do for you? Well, imagine being asked that question. He was blind. Was it not obvious what he needed? But Jesus wanted to hear his voice. He wanted the blind man to ask for his help. Quite simply, the man answered, Lord, I want to see. Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you, said Jesus. And immediately the blind man could see. The blind beggar was blind no more. He was overjoyed. He could see Jesus. He could see people. He left his bowl, his begging mat, and followed Jesus, praising God at the top of his voice. Maybe he danced. Maybe he raised his hands. Who knows? But his joy was contagious. When all the people saw it, they praised God too. Now, do you remember the town, the name of the town where Jesus was? It was called Jericho. As well as a blind beggar, someone else in Jericho met Jesus that day. His name was Zacchaeus. As we explore his story, let's spot the difference between him and the blind beggar. Now, Zacchaeus was well known in Jericho because he had a very important job. He had status. He had authority. He was a chief tax collector. Zacchaeus collected taxes. Now, you might not know, but taxes are money we need to pay to the government. And not a lot of people like doing that. Zacchaeus was rich at a time when most people were poor. Tax collectors became rich because they cheated people. Now, we're just talking about in Jesus' day. If there are any tax collectors here, I'm sure you're all above board and you're not cheating everybody. But that's what happened in the days of these stories. So they sometimes took a little bit more money than they should, and they kept it for themselves. Perhaps Zacchaeus was greedy. We don't know for a fact, well, sorry, we do know for a fact that he was wealthy, and he had a very good job. Perhaps he thought he didn't really need anything from Jesus. But Zacchaeus um, heard the crowd that day as they followed Jesus along the road. And he was curious. He had heard about the amazing things that Jesus had been doing, and he wanted to see for himself. Ah, there's something else I forgot to tell you about Zacchaeus. He was a very short man. Because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. But Zacchaeus had an idea. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus as he was coming. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up at Zacchaeus and he told Zacchaeus he want, what he wanted him to do. Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. Well, what a surprise. Right away, Zacchaeus came down. He welcomed Jesus gladly. Mm, of course, the people round about weren't pleased at all, as you can imagine. They began to mutter, Poh, doesn't Jesus know what this man is like? He's gone to be the guest of a sinner, a crook. Then Zacchaeus said something amazing to Jesus. Look, Lord, here and now, I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I'm going to give them, four, give them back four times what I took. Wow. Jesus smiled and told the crowd, 
He had come to seek and save those who were lost. That's people just like Zacchaeus. People like the blind beggar. And guess what? That's just people like you and me as well. So earlier we played spot the difference. Now, did you try to spot the differences between the two characters? What we're going to do is we're going to look up one difference. That's their response to Jesus after meeting him. When Jesus meets with us and we start following him, there's an inner change within us. Our sins are forgiven. We have a new start. Jesus can make a greedy person generous, an impatient person patient, a fearful person bold, and a sad person full of joy. Now, people should be able to see this inner change in our outward actions if we follow Jesus and are his friend. Both men responded to Jesus and his love for them in different ways. The blind beggar responded by praising God and telling others about Jesus about, and all he had done. Zacchaeus responded by changing his behavior, by righting his, his wrongs, and by showing God's love to people in a practical way. So what about us? How do we respond to Jesus and his love? Do others hear us speaking openly about following him and the difference he makes in our lives, just like the blind beggar? Do others see God's love in our actions, just like Zacchaeus? There are so many ways that we can respond. Jesus makes a big difference in his followers, and others should be able to spot that. I wonder how the huge change in these two men's lives impacted the city of Jericho, which was their community. Imagine what conversations people had with the blind beggar who was now a follower of Jesus. Imagine what it was like to be on the receiving end of Zacchaeus' kindness and generosity. Their transformation must have been obvious to people round about. Did this cause people to pause and consider Jesus' love for them? Did it make them think, maybe Jesus could change me too? Jericho was their community. What about our community, our schools, our workplaces? Imagine the impact on our classroom, at the school gates, with those we work with, with those we play with, with our neighbours, as Jesus' love and power is displayed and shown through all of us.